The United States of America stands as one of the most populous countries globally, boasting states with populations surpassing that of entire countries. To put it in perspective, California alone has a population larger than Switzerland, Denmark, Austria, and Greece combined. However, the uneven distribution of the population across U.S. states results in certain regions having significantly lower population figures. In particular, the combined population of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina is just slightly above that of California, despite their sun-drenched beaches, rolling mountains, and rich history. This stark contrast prompts a compelling question. Why do so few Americans choose to call the expansive region of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina home? The Hurricanes. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, estimates an average of six named storms forming in the Atlantic Basin each year, two of which become hurricanes. These storms frequently target the Carolinas and Georgia. Between 1851 and 2023, North Carolina has experienced 41 landfalling tropical cyclones, South Carolina 44, and Georgia 29. That's an average of one hurricane every four to five years. The financial impact of these storms is staggering. Hurricane Florence in 2018 cost $24 billion in damage to North Carolina alone. Hurricane Michael in 2018, despite not making landfall in South Carolina, still caused an estimated $1.5 billion in losses. These hefty price tags can deter potential residents and businesses from establishing roots in hurricane-prone areas. A study by the University of North Carolina found that the average annual cost of hurricane preparedness for a coastal homeowner in North Carolina was $1,100. Beyond the immediate financial toll, hurricanes disrupt lives and infrastructure, power outages, flooding, and property damage can take months, even years, to recover from. This instability and constant threat of disruption can be a major deterrent for individuals and families seeking a secure and predictable future. Also, the fear and anxiety associated with hurricanes can be debilitating. Witnessing the devastation firsthand, or even facing the constant threat, can impact mental well-being and quality of life. A 2020 survey found that 30% of residents in hurricane-prone areas reported experiencing post-traumatic stress symptoms after a major storm. Flooding. We cannot talk about hurricanes without mentioning floods. These states have witnessed a lot of flood disasters in the past, especially South Carolina. Flooded roads and homes have become a familiar sight in many parts of the state, particularly in coastal regions. Data shows that these flood events are happening much more frequently and will likely intensify in the future. Flooding could occur more frequently and more intensely for homes in a flood zone. Additionally, areas that previously did not experience flooding now have an increased threat of flood damage. Today, South Carolina has 229,000 people at risk of coastal flooding, and an additional 56,000 people are projected to be at risk due to sea level rise by 2050. If you attended your geography classes in school, you'll remember that coastal flooding usually occurs when low-lying areas are submerged by seawater. In addition to storm-induced flooding, sea level rise progressively increases the frequency and severity of coastal flooding. Coastal communities in South Carolina are increasingly at risk of coastal flooding on days with less extreme tides or little wind. Even on sunny days, tremendous damage can happen to critical infrastructure, agriculture, coastal cities, and towns when a flood occurs. Floods that block roads can cut off access to utilities and emergency services and affect transportation. A weak, slow-moving storm can cause more damage due to flooding than a more powerful, fast-moving hurricane. This was very evident with Hurricane Florence in 2018. Early diseases. Historically, malaria and yellow fever were indeed significant deterrents to settlement, particularly along the coastal areas. Before the 20th century, malaria was endemic throughout the South, with coastal areas particularly vulnerable due to ideal mosquito breeding grounds. Estimates suggest up to 80% of the population in some coastal regions suffered from malaria annually, leading to high mortality rates. By comparison, malaria transmission in the northern states was much less common. The constant threat of malaria discouraged permanent settlement, especially amongst European colonists who were not immune to the disease. Many early settlements were located inland to escape the worst hit coastal regions. Even established coastal communities faced population fluctuations due to malaria outbreaks, hindering economic and social development. But malaria was not all the early settlers had to battle with. 
yellow fever endemics ravaged the Carolinas and Georgia throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, with major outbreaks in 1794, 1854, and 1878. Mortality rates during these outbreaks could be as high as 50%, leading to widespread fear and panic. The fear of yellow fever discouraged immigration and investment in coastal areas. Yellow fever's impact was arguably more dramatic and immediate than malaria's, but both diseases had a significant long-term effect on population distribution. Although malaria and yellow fever are no longer major concerns, their historical impact remains an important factor in the demographics of the Carolinas and Georgia. Social Values Carolina and the Northeast often champion progressive values like environmentalism, LGBTQ plus rights, and gun control. Texas and the South tend to hold more traditional values on these issues. Pew Research Center data from 2021 shows that 71% of Californians and 69% of Northeasterners support marriage equality for same-sex couples, compared to only 44% of Southerners. This divergence in social values can influence migration patterns of individuals who hold strong stances on these issues. Also, the Northeast and California are generally less religious than the South. In 2020, 34.2% of North Carolinians and 37.6% of South Carolinians identified as religiously unaffiliated, compared to 41.3% in California and 46.3% in Massachusetts. This difference in religious beliefs and practices can influence cultural norms and values. Land Size Disparities California and Texas dwarf the Carolinas and Georgia in land size. California sprawls across 163,696 square miles, Texas across 268,596 square miles, while North Carolina squeezes into 53,891 square miles, South Carolina into 32,277 square miles, and Georgia into 59,425 square miles. That's roughly three to five times the land area of each Carolina state compared to California and more than four times the size of Georgia compared to Texas. This stark area difference translates to significant population density variations. In 2023, California's population density is 258.21 people per square mile. Texas stands at 89.54, while North Carolina comes in at 202.6, South Carolina at 158.8, and Georgia at 173.7. While denser than their Texan counterparts, the Carolinas are significantly less dense as California, highlighting the impact of land area on population distribution. California and Texas have the luxury of spreading their population over vast landscapes. This allows for the development of sprawling metropolises like Los Angeles and San Francisco in California, and Houston and Dallas in Texas, without feeling overly congested. The Carolinas and Georgia, with their limited land, face higher concentration in urban areas like Charlotte, Atlanta, and Raleigh. This could lead to issues like higher housing costs, traffic congestion, and pressure on infrastructure. Limited career options, agriculture, textiles, and tourism sectors, while significant, have been kept pace with national job market diversification. In 2022, 13.5% of North Carolina's workforce and 15.4% of South Carolina's were employed in agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting. Meanwhile, tech sector employment lags behind national averages in all three states. 5.5% in North Carolina, 4.6% in South Carolina, and 6.6% in Georgia compared to the national average of 9.2%. Tech hubs like California and Massachusetts boast significantly higher concentrations of tech jobs. 14.2% and 14.7% of their respective workforces, respectively. This translates to a stark difference in opportunities for software engineers, data scientists, and other tech professionals. Limited options drive talented individuals to seek opportunities elsewhere. In 2021, North Carolina saw a net out migration of over 58,000 residents aged 25 to 44 a demographic crucial for workforce growth. This brain drain further weakens the talent pool, making it harder for companies to innovate and attract new businesses. Average wages in these states often fall short of national benchmarks. North Carolina's median annual wage in 2022 was $51,490, while South Carolina's was $50,400, both below the national median of $57,856. This lower earning potential can deter skilled professionals seeking competitive salaries. Cost of living. Housing costs in these states have been steadily rising, especially in popular coastal areas and major cities. 
affordability can become a concern for first-time home buyers or those on fixed incomes. While rental rates may be lower than some coastal states, they have also been increasing, making it difficult for some to find affordable housing, especially in high-demand areas. Although groceries and utilities are not as expensive as some major metropolitan areas, grocery and utility costs can still be a significant chunk of the budget, especially for families or those on tight incomes. Sales tax vary across the states, with South Carolina having the highest at 6%, and North Carolina and Georgia at 4.75%, and 6% respectively. This can add up over time, impacting disposable income. Gas prices and car insurance can be higher in some parts of these states, especially in rural areas where public transportation options are limited. While healthcare costs may be lower than national averages, out-of-pocket expenses and insurance premiums can still be a burden for some individuals and families. Did we miss any other major factors? Please let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Until next time, 